Chinese esoteric school, what esoteric means is esoteric is a union of three mysteries. So you have the mystery of the mind, the mystery of the body, and the mystery of speech. Now what does that mean? When we do Dharma, we purify those three mysteries. Now how is that done? You purify the karma of the mind through visualization. You purify the karma of speech through chanting mantras. And you purify the karma of the physical body by doing mudras. Mantras, mudras, and visualization, the union of the three mysteries, henceforth you have esoteric practice, or the Dharma esoteric practice. Now this practice originated about probably, if I remember some of the scripts that Master Yu had spoken to us before, it was about 5,000 years old. Hmm. Okay, Several thousand years ago, all these uh, attained and enlightened uh, people have actually realized that by creating or speaking seed syllables, which is what we call mantra. Now, they're not actual words. Mm -hmm. They don't have a literal English translations because of the fact that they are seed syllables. They were uh, sound syllables. When you combine that sound syllable, what it does is actually almost the way I understood it, creates frequency for healing or whatever kind of uh, effect. It has different effects depending on the seed syllables, depending on the uh, connection of all those seed syllables. They um, realized, they started um, experimenting on themselves. They would actually almost to the point that they would hurt themselves. When they hurt themselves, let's say for example, I tried to pinch myself on one particular side of the body in one particular spot, let's just say somewhere in my wrist, they realize it creates a certain amount of pain and when they utter, a sound, a seed syllable of a sound, it actually decreases the pain, okay? So they realize, oh, okay, it's lessening suffering, which is one of the precepts is actually help people lessen their suffering, right? Right, right. Okay, so it helps lessen suffering. I'm like, oh, okay, this is fantastic. So that's where, that's how it all started. When they actually, uh, they realized that when they experimented, when they tried to um, stop the seed syllable, the sound to come out of the, the, the mouth, that person can actually die. So that's, where, that's when they realize how important mantra is mm -hmm. to decrease suffering. Seed syllable, like what I said, there's no translation, there's no word, word translation. Right. Now they decided, okay, this is fantastic, these mantras, so how about if we just start saying these mantras over and over again? Somebody asks somewhere, well, how many of these things are we gonna say? Right? So they start counting. They count, they count, they count. Okay, if I say this one time, three times, 721, they came out finally with 108. They realized that 108 times of saying a mantra is the perfect number. Henceforth, mala is created, 108 beats, one mala. It's a perfect number, it's where they came out. And so I'm like, okay, this is great, so 108 of this. They start using their fingers, they start counting, counting, counting. And then again, another realization came from these wise men and women. They realized, if I touch this finger with this finger, I feel an effect. If I move my hand this way with this posture, I feel a physical effect, an emotional and mental effect. That's where mudra started. If I touch this, I feel this. If I do this, I feel that. So they started using, that's when they realized meridians channels of energy flowing in the body, pressure points, all those things. That's where mudra, how mudra started. Now they combine those two so far, something happened in the mind, they realize something, they realize, oh, visualization. When I follow these series of steps of visualization combined with the mudra, the movement, and combined with the speech, the mantra, this is what happened. People become enlightened, suffering stops, or it lessens. Right, right. So that's how it started, esoteric school, mantra, mudra, and visualization. Is that cool? Incredible. Right. <laughs> wait, 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 okay, okay now. All right. All right. Now that you gave, gave that great explanation, we want to know what Hanami has done for you, how long you've been in it, where you're from, a little bit of background and history. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, probably been Hanami, I've been, before I became a disciple, I started practicing medicine Buddha. That's probably about three years ago, three, going on four years ago. And I've been looking for that particular path because um, I like something practical because I am not. 
<laughs> so I have to find something that's practical because I know I need a, a series of practices that I can stick on because before I was flighty, right? right. So I'm like, if, if, if there's a procedure, you know, like a recipe that I can follow, mm -hmm. some a proven procedure where the effect is you get enlightened, your suffering went down, you help people, something, an amazing perfection and change happens in your life. And it's proven because I can, all these masters in, the, in our lineage have done it. You know, I can actually revert back to history and see all these men and women have done it. Then, right. you know, I can try and follow as, as, as much as I can. So that's about three, four years ago. And the effect is um, uh, phenomenal so far. Great. So you, you got in it through Medicine Buddha. How were yes, you? Yes, through Ooh. Medicine Buddha. Yeah. It started with Dan Kendall. Okay. And met Dan at a, uh, a Lohan School of Shaolin. Okay. He just got back from China from, uh, with Master. Then he started teaching. Um, Dharma. The first, very, very first Dharma that I remember doing was um, a Boundless Light and uh, a, some kind of Lotus uh, Mudra, another dhar Dharma. I couldn't remember, but I remember Boundless Light as the first one. And then from there, I kind of like, oh, I want more because I can feel changes in my body, you know. Right. The mind stops becoming flighty, it's not as spacey before. And it, I follow. This is so short, mm -hmm. and it's great because it's short, and you know there's a profound effect all of a sudden. Okay, I want to try some more. I want more. I want more. And then finally, I started doing Medicine Buddha, and then uh, from Dan Campbell, and then Black Manjushri from Kuo Lao Shir here at this temple. And then after that, I'm like, okay, I know I want to become a disciple. I want to do this. I hope I can have enough merit to finally meet Master Yu. Wow, and you're here. And so, what do you see for the future of? You in Hanmi. Master, you had a, a lecture uh, one time, okay. probably like a year ago, and he was teaching us that when you enter the realm of the Buddhas, okay, one of the first things that you have to realize with your heart is that you are doing this to help your loved ones, your parents, your relatives, okay. And that's one of the main things. The second thing is to help other people outside of your family, and then help yourself. That's actually one of the things that you uh, think about with your heart when you enter a sacred uh, space or a mandala. Okay? So you're going there out of uh, love and true compassion because the, what I got from it is I'm doing this not because I want to be a superwoman, but I want to do this because of my loved ones, yeah. I got family, yeah. my family. And then, after that, after several, probably months or years of practicing, I said, so besides my family, who else? You know, like the compassion, the, the, uh, the, the currents of compassion started this small, and it got bigger, and it got bigger, and then finally you just want to uh, uh, encompass uh, a, a wide span after a while to help right. as much uh, beings as possible. Right. Yeah.